Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is Societal Narcissism. And this video is a sponsored video, sponsored by Ladies of Liberty for Jake. And there is audio attached. So this is a narcissistic recording. Hi, Ollie. I have been binging on your audio recordings playlist this week, and they're always cathartic and shed so much light on narcissistic tactics. Some were true nutcases that deserve no contact, and others, I feel, were reasonable and could have been resolved if more people knew how to cut through their BS. I found your channel in 2021 and it explained so much about why my own father was so different and unable to be reasonable and see his own faults. I would like to include my own recording I took from my therapist I was seeing at the time, and my father and I would see her together. I tried to warn her about his victimization and unreasonable blame, but it's unfortunate that narcissism is not commonly taught and she fell for his sobbery. I live with my mother since they separated when I was three. Then I moved in with my dad because I thought he would help me with discipline and finishing on an online course I had been struggling the past for years with my ADHD and unsupportive mother. He made it so toxic living there, like not validating my progress, and demanded an adult diagnosis because he couldn't believe two hours a day was the most I could study because that's how long my Adderall lasted. But he refused to pay for it, believing the county needs to provide that sort of thing, making it my fault. For context, this recording is in summer of 2021 and I had gotten my last haircut the day before COVID, so my hair was starting to grow out. I thought I might try to donate it if it kept growing out. Small amounts of hair would fall off naturally and accumulate on the stairs where we were living. He refused to pay for trash service and our house was a mess and a garbage, and a garbage full of his junk. So somehow, only my, things were, only my things were ever a problem. He would never directly ask me to clean up my hair on the stairs. All we'd ever do is co covertly mope and only say, I, have, I haven't cleaned the stairs when we were discussing other issues. But why would your hair fall out on the stairs? Like if it's in the shower and it's coming out of the drink, because that's what happens with me. I mean, it's a running joke with, with, uh, with me and Charlene. Every time she goes in there, I think there's, I can't know the bit. There's this song. This is like emo song from the 2000s. Her hair. It's like her hair. Your hair is everywhere. And she starts screaming that every time she goes in to clean the bathroom. Because like this hair gets ever. I mean, it just comes out when you wash your hair. You detangle your hair every time. It's just like you think you're going bald, but you're not. I mean, your hair falls out naturally. I don't know how it would end up on the hair. Is it even your hair? If the house is a trashed out mess as it is, who knows whose hair it could be? Are there animals? Is there a dog? And he knows his house is a mess, so he's looking the blame shift for why he's living in such in, in such a mess. In this recording, I try to nail him down to directly ask for the things he wants. In this case, my hair on the stairs, and he couldn't do it. You'll notice in the recording he was up he was up and what somewhat cleaning when most of the time he watches TV. I knew this was just a tactic because he was uncomfortable and used to avoid eye contact. In the middle of the recording he let out I let out a giant what what the fuck because I was so genuinely shocked on how he could spin it around on me. I have since moved out because I was almost certainly going to I was I was certainly going to to Kim's living with him. This is KMS, I'm not sure. Oh I know. K yeah, suicide. No, don't don't. I still love my dad, although of course he makes it difficult. I don't believe he's a full blown narcissist because he has apologized for making for his mistakes living together. But he still shows covert narcissistic tendencies and doesn't trust me and holds 
onto the person I was before we lived together, even though we've come to the conclusion that moving in together was a mistake. His only redeeming quality was that he didn't have bad intentions and believed in me where my mother struggled to. He would always tell me I'm so smart and brilliant, but only as a weapon against me to say how he doesn't understand how my ADHD won't, my ADHD mind won't let me do something. But then he refuses to trust me in how I chose to use my brain. Yesterday he rescinded his belief in me, so I've got no contact because I cannot deal with his negativity until my situation improves. This is, before I even finish reading this or hear this, Jake. <clears throat> the question, the first question I have to ask on the blaring red flag is why aren't you writing in about your mother? Why aren't you writing in about your mother? Because to me, from what you're saying about your mother, these off, these, these um, one-off comments about your mother, it sounds to me like she's the reason you have ADHD in the first place. Thank you for everything you do. I now know how to deal with a narcissist if I ever run into another one in my life, which I hope I don't. Don't sugarcoat don't sugarcoat things, stick their nose in their own shit, and have no empathy for their discomfort because they have none for yours. They are literally toddlers who knock over your Legos and cannot fathom why you would do the same to them. I'm sorry I don't have a contribution right now. I hope to come back for you in the next crypto bull market. Thanks again. Jake. P okay, I'm assuming... And I don't care. I mean, I'm assuming you're gay. P.S. You have pretty eyes. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. On to the, uh, on to the video. Or the audio. And this is 17 minutes, 42 seconds. Well, no, I'm telling you I'll do them. To, I'm going to do them tomorrow. Well, get them out of the closet tomorrow. Okay, fine. But what I'm saying is, would you really rather ask me why what I think about my hairballs and tell me that they're gross and disgusting and people and people think I'm I'm gross and you you can't just instead say what is whose people people i mean that's just something the narcissist they throw out these broad brush vague accusation people think what what people this house is a disgusting junked out mess my hairball like i i i don't understand how there could be hairballs why on the stairs are these hairballs there might not necessarily be hair it's just being collected in the carpet just the general dust and dirt being being strewn around or that's just where they end up. Is that maybe the carpet is the only, maybe the stairs are the only places that have carpet that's going to stick, where hair is going to stick to, or a floor where the hair is going to stick to. I wish you would, I wish you would do that because it bothers me. I think it's redundant. I think that you personally, um, you're not arguing that it's gross. But, that I think you agree it's gross. I think that you you are not arguing that. I don't think. Right. So why does so what's the point in telling me that it's gross, and telling me that people think I'm gross if that doesn't if I'm that doesn't if that doesn't about motivate? I'm not talking about anybody. Well, like in the, in the example, I'm just I'm combining the examples of showering. 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 So the showering and the hairballs. So you don't think it's productive to ask me to do something because out of respect? No, that's a very important. It stuff should be done out of respect. Person 
So why, why, why are you not able to do it right now? Because I think that we've had enough identification of the air balls in the past few months that there shouldn't have to be a discussion about common sense, which is... This doesn't even make sense. Like, how... Like, where are these hair balls? Like, if they're in the shower and in the drain, okay, I can understand that. But if you're literally saying your hair is on the stairs, like, that could just be dust balls. That could be, like, pet hair. What's what's going... It doesn't make any sense. And it sounds to me like, like your, your dad doesn't even necessarily know what he's mad about. He's just mad. And I'm wondering if he's mad at the same person that you should be mad at, your mother. Yes, I I do see that my dad went stair by stair by stair, brought the hair balls down, got them in a compact ball, and then didn't finish the job. See, I think you're getting blamed for something that's not your, like, it's not your, your pro. There's hair on every step. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Hair doesn't just fall out because you're walking upstairs. Okay, that's the truth, okay? That I brought them, okay, that, but all the time you and I go up and down the stairs, you and I were both looking at the hair, right? I don't see it. You don't? I don't. Okay. That's, <clears throat> then I wish you were more observant. Then, and I'm not. And in place, you need to be more communicative. It doesn't even make sense. Jay. Like, y your hair is all over the stairs? Like, it doesn't make sense. It sounds like a collection of hair and dirt and dust is collecting on the stairs, which will happen if you don't sweep them or vacuum them. If he was saying he's pulling out clumps of, of, of hair out of the shower drain and off the walls of the shower, you know that's one thing. But this is on this. This is absurd. Like I don't even know. Like, are you serious? Like, I don't even know how to argue this. This issue is about something else with him. Because I can't, I can't see, think, smell everything that you do. And therefore, a conversation shouldn't have to take place because I should know, think, think and, and smell what you do. Yeah, he has no answer for that. Because this isn't about the hair. It's not. It's about something else. This one's taking up a ton of space. Is it empty? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. See, it sounds to me like he's upset over the condition of his own house that he caused, and now he's looking the blame shift on something else that's so minor that he so he doesn't have to he doesn't have to deal with his own shit well and I also feel like you're doing that you're just kind of doing this because you're frustrated and you don't and you just want to avoid talking because it seems like I'm kind of I'm kind of winning to be honest exactly well you're making the point he has no real point <clears throat> and again it's not about your hair it's about something else that you're winning yeah you won't I'm sick at my stomach how Huh? How? That uh, a very uncomfortable time is shortly on the horizon when you've got to leave and it's going to be on bad terms. So it, you really, you're really going to make it like that? No, I'm not. 
not at all. You could start paying rent like I asked for September 1st. I gave you extra time, which I feel has been more than generous. You're the one that's made the choice, not me. It's all been your choice, not mine. It's like you keep turning turning things back on me for what you're doing. So, so, so then I, so then, so then, so why should I f appreciate living here? If, if I could pay you 600 or if I could pay not an asshole 600, I would rather pay not an asshole. Okay, I'm sorry. It's okay. You you feel justified calling me. No, I, just, I, I I'm sorry. We, we'll but but I'm trying. I'm trying that? to. But I'm trying to say. So is this more over rent than anything else? Like he just wants you to pay rent. Like he's throwing that out there. I mean, I guess if you're living in his house, he has a right to ask for rent. He does. But you're right, if I, I'm going to pay $600 a month to somebody, am I going to pay it to an asshole, or am I going to pay it to somebody who doesn't treat me like an asshole? If you, like, why should I be, then why should I be grateful? Why should I be thankful for living here? If Look, if, if, if you're living there rent-free, I mean, you should be grateful for that. Uh, that's not, that's not unreasonable either. I mean, you are an adult, you had problems with your mom, that's why you're moving in there. I mean, you should be grateful that he is letting you be there with a roof over it, over your head. And if he's asking you for rent, and he does have a right to do that. If, if you're going to make me put up with you and pay 600 a month. Well, first off, number one, my behaviors and attitudes toward you of recent have been improved. Yeah, but start the the first year and a half sucked ass, and it was the most painful experience of my life. Well, we're not talking about that. We're only talking. We can only. We can See, and there you go. Okay, we're not talking. But yeah, it matters. It does matter. Okay. See, they just want to like. Okay, I've turned over a new leaf. None of that matters. No, it, it does matter. It does. But to be fair, after a year and a half of not paying rent, like. He has a right to ask for it. Um, and you, you got to have some appreciation for having a roof over your head for a year and a half. You know, regardless of he's being an asshole or not. But he doesn't want to have to, he doesn't want to have to accept or you don't want to look back on it. They just want to always move forward like, like it never happened before. And only talk about the present. So then, and so then you then you have the chance to to say it's worth it's worth to let Jacob pass his class. Well, let's uh, back up to right over there within the past few weeks. And that's it. That the the narcissist only wants to talk about the present because the present they could lie about. If all you're talking about is the present, then you can't go back in the past to call out their lies. Yeah. No. 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 You said, can we have a clean slate? Okay. Yeah, we're we're we are on a clean slate, and we're still we're still talking about. So no, 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 so no, no, you no, you. On a clean slate. You're calling me an I and then I'm and I'm saying I'm sorry because we I agree to the clean slate. But, but my point is. So, but you then now you you feel I should be grateful for living here. So now, if you're if you're telling me to pay six hundred or get out, then I'm starting to feel regretful and resentful for moving in here with you in the first place, and going through all the pain, and going and losing all my money for nothing. Well, I feel I hear you, and I think that's a not that's not a fair synopsis at all. Why? Because the circumstance here... Why, why should I have to pay you or mom rent money? I didn't want to pay you a damn thing. I wanted to go on the fucking streets. And yet you force me into this situation and tell me to be thankful for it. Because we see the streets as an end to a very sad thing for our son. We don't want that to happen to you.
okay, no, that's logical, but, but if you were willing to do it, and they're like, no, come live here, and then they want to start demanding rent after you lost all your money, I guess, I guess in crypto, because you, because you made that, that, that comment when you're, in your writing, Yeah, I mean, if you were willing to live on the street, and that is not optimal, optimal at all, you know, he doesn't really have a right then to be like, oh, well, you should be grateful. Well, no, you told me you were going to give me a stable, you know, somewhere stable to live, but then you did nothing but, but make me miserable for a year and a half. <laughs> like, I'm supposed to be thankful for that? On some level, you got to be thankful that you have a route that you're not on the street, but... You know, I understand it both ways. Right, so why are you going to give up? Huh? Why are you giving up? Why are you giving up like mom? Just because of the money? Is no, it literally it's, just because of the money? No, actually, it's the hurt in my life. It's the hurt that, um, that I live in a home that now I'm paying 100% for, and I feel very sad. It's a but wasn't he paying 100% before you moved in? He was already paying for the home before you moved in, right? <clears throat> Did he kick out a roommate or something? Was there somebody else there to make room for you? It's a sad place to live. Because I think you're unhappy here. But actually, I don't think you're unhappy. I know you're unhappy. Of which I don't know how much I'm... How much of this unhappiness I'm responsible for, but um, I'm sad that it may come to what you've said all along, which is that you're going to Texas to kill yourself, and that. That's a lot of sadness and responsibility on my heart. And yes, I feel like whatever mistakes your mom and I made, we we feel like oh, I can't speak for it. I feel like I I can't speak. It's the problem is the is your mother here. The problem seems like it's been your mother here because your father's like, I thought it sounded to me, I was leaning towards your father definitely has a problem with which, which your mother as well. Okay, and then when he started, well, as far as my your mother, however he said it, and then he's like, I don't know what, yeah, I don't know what your mother thinks. So that would tell me basically it's a bad relationship going on here. I think you're both mad at each other and you're mad at the wrong person, okay? This back and forth that you're having with, with, with each other should really be reserved for your mother because that what it seems like, that's who it seems like really screwed up the situation. A better, actually, I feel like I've provided a better opportunity to your mom for you to get Competition. a education. That's what I'm I believe this environment is better than bombs. Might be that your father is trying to make up for what he feels is your mother screwing you up, your mother breaking you, your mother causing your ADHD. I don't, I don't know how he feels about about you. I'm assuming you're gay from the comment and. And, and your voice inflection, and again, no problem with that, but I don't know, maybe he has an issue with it. It doesn't seem like he has a huge issue with it since you've been living there for so long, but maybe inside he feels like if he was around, if you had lived with him, if your mother, your, your mother's the cause, a lot of these issues. But being that you kind of left her out and he doesn't really want to say anything about, it seems like you both, have issues with that woman that you're afraid to bring out because she's possibly a borderline histrionic the blow up it's not worth it you both you both might be afraid of her on some level 
and that it's not fair to blame me for you not being from school. And I don't know where that piece of paper was. Right, it's not fair to blame me. It this is between him and his him and your mother. You're just the vessel. His real problem is with your mother. But he's afraid to confront her. Obviously, you have issues with her. There's your issue, and that's how I started by saying this when I was before I even got to the to to the to the video. Like you gave me the preamble of your ADHD and your history. When you, you don't talk to your mother, not that you don't talk to her, you had to move out. She's the issue. Remember, it is about breaking it down to its to its simplest, most common denominator. Get it down. Drill down to brass tacks. Where does this all start? See, you're starting this story in the middle because you're already at your father's house a couple years. Like, how did you end up there? What's the story that went on after your parents got divorced up until the time you moved out of your mother's house? What happened there? Because if, if you understand what happened there, it'll... it'll shed a lot of light on what's going on between you and your dad. Right here. If you wrote down... I did, I did damn near everything on that paper. Don't you fucking start with that piece of paper. I did damn... I, including figuring out how much the garbage and recycle costs. No, that's not what the piece of paper was about at all. That's not what that piece of paper was about. What well, was it? It was about finishing school. Is it about your school education? Right. School but then, uh, am I able to choose how fast I can study, though? Am I am I able to... I can't control that, Dad. You're the one who um, made the um, schedule. It was it your Okay, well, then, then let, me, let me rephrase once and for all. I cannot give you a schedule because I cannot choose or control how fast I study. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what and this... I'm, and I'm sorry for ever getting your hopes up, for ever setting any expectations people write because I cannot keep them. And, and then you use them against me, even though I have no control over it. Well, if you remember what I said... Before. I'll be honest with you. I think you got... Look... I understand ADHD and PTSD and the overwhelming feelings of doom and I can't focus and I can't concentrate. But if you just keep spouting out, I, I, I can't help it, I can't do it, people are going to be put off by that and they don't understand it. You have to be able to push yourself here, Jake. Like on this issue, you got to just be able to push yourself through it because people aren't going to want to hear the excuses because what's going to happen when you do graduate you do get a degree and you do want to go out and get a job okay they're not going to want to hear about your adhd well maybe they will in in 2023 but you're not going to go it's not going to not going to go very far and you're not going to end up being a very happy person This tells me that your father doesn't really know who you are because of the divorce. I don't know how much time you spent with him after your parents separated. I don't know what the deal is. Okay, but this is your, it seems like your father possibly being alienated from you for, uh, to a certain extent, not knowing exactly what was going on when you were growing up. So he didn't really know exactly who you are as a person. And again, I think this frustration that he is sort of taking out on you is really fucking meant for your mother. If you want to do, if you're living, you're going to live with, right? That's what I thought. That's what I kind of thought was the expectation. And I still did. 
I still I still am doing that. I've been I've been on the same track since day one. It, the only the only difference is is, is the, the the amount of time. The, the the right the schedule, the goal is still the same. It's always been the same. But the schedule was actually. Um I was wrong to give you a schedule because you guys wanted one so bad. And, and and I feel like I couldn't just give you a no time frame because you wouldn't accept it. So I had to make up some BS for you for you guys to, to fit with. And so three months sound like a, a roundabout reasonable time. And I didn't, and I, I don't, I didn't actually have any clue of if that was a reasonable amount of time or not. So you didn't know how long this was going to take. They were demanding an answer, a schedule. You gave them what you thought, because you know your your choice was, and you were willing to live on the street. But I guess you decided, and I understand why you would. I think everybody does that. You want a roof? You might as well just go with the roof over your head. Maybe things will be better with my dad. Like again, the childhood story, the growing up is 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 where the answer, the real answer to your problem is, Jake. So yeah, I'm sorry for I I felt pressured and I gave you guys a time I truth is I have no time I have no time for you. you say you guys meaning your mother and your father but your mother and your father bear it seems like they don't talk they don't communicate your father won't can't speak for what your mother thinks that's a problem that's a problem because you're putting out there they're demanding expectations but yet they have no idea your parents what the other one expects what the other one is doing that's the problem here all I can tell you is I'm doing something every day towards my goal. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quick fast figure out one important thing, which is I'm going to do what we agreed to do with the counselor the last time I spoke with them, which is to try and find and evaluating source to try and help to get you a um, diagnosis. The problem with the counselor seems to be you and your father are going in and talking about your, yours and his issues. When you should be talking about what went on since the, since the birth. Since uh, since the divorce, through your childhood, what your issues are? Because it sounds like your father has issues as well. See, you. This is all a symptom of the divorce and the time and the time you were growing up in your mother's house, and now you're dealing once again with the present, and that's the problem with dealing with just the present. Is you just run around in circles? Well, none of this makes sense. Well, yeah, it doesn't make sense because you're not looking back on how this all got started. And a plan to get you perhaps on disability, which would be a great resource, state disability. Right. maybe even in a group home or whatever is available resource-wise through the county or the state. A group home? Like, it doesn't sound like you need to be in a group home. The disability, I mean, if your ADHD is at the point where you, you need to be on disability, then you should go on disability. <clears throat> This is guilt. 
This is guilt over the divorce, over not being there through your childhood, for whatever happened. That's what's going on here. He doesn't understand because he doesn't really know you, Jake. And after a year and a half, he still doesn't know you. Like the hairballs on the stairs make no sense. Like the stuff that you guys are talking about, the reason why you're having so many issues is because you're trying to deal with each other in the present. When you both seem like have been screwed up by your mother. I think if you go and you start talking about your feelings of your past, of your issues with your mother, the two of you are going to have a greater, a better understanding of each other. And it probably will alleviate a lot of the guilt that it seems like your father is feeling. Because it does seem like your father is feeling pretty guilty about some stuff. I was explaining to you, yes, what you do to make me hurt. Because the this problem the problem in this relationship is you, Dad. I understand that too. I disagree. I think the problem in the relationship, Jake, is your mother. With both of you. The problem is your mother. Your father didn't break you. Your mother did. Clearly. Clearly your mother did. Because you had all these issues living with her for however many years that that it was. What did you say? What did you say? They separated when you were three. So what? 20 years living with your mother? There's your problem. And you're trying to focus on the year and a half that you lived with your dad. No, you've got to focus from from the time you were three years old. This is why you and your dad are going back and forth like this. Because neither of you are dealing with the person who really broke everything. Mommy. So I'm trying to tell you what the, the pains and the hurts are. And you can't just hear me out it's not finger pointing all right let's hear the most specific pain or hurt and right i was trying so it was uh so right now i just want i i would like I would I I would really like this to end with uh if you can if Jacob I would really like if you could clean the hairballs because it bothers me. What? That's crazy. So that's, and that's the end there. 
That's completely reasonable. Just ask me. Just say, Jacob, I'd like you to clean the hair balls. Good. I'm not going to do that. What? It's almost like your father's afraid. I think your mother, per, like I, you have told me nothing about her, other than it, it won. What I could almost get, I bet my life that your mother is a histrionic, over-the-top borderline who loses her fucking mind at ever being challenged. And your father probably in that time was so traumatic and whatever dealings he's had with her over the years, he's afraid to say anything outright. And maybe there's a part of you, uh, there is a lot of you that reminds him of your mother. So that's why he's so, so afraid. But the problem lies with your mother, not with your father, for both of you. You're right. I don't think your dad's a narcissist. I think he has a lot of the same issues that you do from dealing with your mother. PTSD from dealing with a borderline. You have to start at the beginning. You can't just deal with the present. It doesn't work. This is what you get. This is why you are what you are. It's so like the two of you should be talking about, you know, she fucked me up. And you'd be like, yeah, she fucked, what did she do with the marriage? The marriage, you should talk to your dad about what actually went down, what he was feeling, what it was like all those years being separated and, and, and what he was feeling in the past. But he said he doesn't want to deal with the past because that's where the pain is. That's where the hurt is. So he wants to make it about hairballs on the stairs. I feel bad. I kind of feel bad for him in a way, because he didn't want you. Because he didn't want you to be out on the street. He didn't want you to die out there. He didn't want you to hurt yourself. But he doesn't have the courage to deal with who actually caused the situation and who broke you. And right now you're not either, because you want you're starting it with with him. You got to go back. You got to deal with that. So. I hope that helps. Thank you so much for your recording and story, Jake. I really appreciate it. And thank you to Ladies of Liberty for sponsoring the video. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, something you'd like me to expose, you'd like to set up a Skype phone call, have a private video made, you'd like to sponsor a video like this with someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all of this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the Cash App, Zelle, PayPal, or email links in the description box below. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been Societal Narcissism. Take care.